Hello, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Tanya's Prime Time TV Media Reviews. Come on in, please. Have a seat, please. Click that like button, please. Thank you very kindly. And of course, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please feel free to click that subscribe button and then hit that tiny little bell so that you can receive all the notifications every time I do go live. Thank you very kindly. Um, I'm just going to wait for a few more people to come in while I'm going ahead and sharing this to my um, YouTube, not my YouTube, Facebook, Facebook. But how's everybody doing this evening on this Friday Eve? <laughs> Hopefully everybody is doing well and everybody is basically ready for the weekend. Um... I don't know what y'all got planned, but, um, let's see, Facebook, Facebook, um, but we're supposed to get like seven to ten inches of snow, uh, this weekend, so y'all holla at me, let me know where y'all watching from, where y'all tuning in from, and if y'all supposed to be getting bad weather this weekend too, um, I swear, We've been getting hit left and right in the Midwest with all this snow. It's just ridiculous. I'm getting sick of it. And I cannot wait to go on our trip this summer. But anyway, again, come on in. Please click the like button. Shout out where you're from, whether that's the South, the Midwest, the East Coast, West Coast, wherever you, wherever you, wherever you coming from, wherever you watching me from, shout me out. And by the way, I'm in the Midwest. For y'all, those of y'all who don't know, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. Yes, there are black people here. <laughs> there are a lot of us here. <laughs> Omaha is full of brown people of all different shades and hues. <laughs> but anyway, y'all. Okay, I got it shared on my Facebook. Um, now, if y'all tuned in last night. I was doing my review actually on uh on uh Black Ink, Black Ink Crew Chicago, um, and I had did like a mini mini review at the beginning of that on the Jesse Smollett uh story, and why not? Oh, that just ooh, I got Jesse Smith in the uh description. Hold on, let me change that. What the heck was I thinking? Jesse Smith. Okay, I changed that. So it should say Jesse Smollett now. I don't know where I got Smith. But anyway, um, because we have found out yesterday that he was officially being charged with a class four felony and they were um or they needed him yeah they needed him to come in and then we found out they they were charging him with a felony and for falsifying a police report and you know they had did a thorough investigation on those nigerians those two brothers and is this light too bright oh my god i feel like i'm about to sweat into a pool of water this light is so bright huh um <laughs> But, uh, I look two tones lighter than I am. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I got a question. First of all, let me start this off with a question. Um, well, okay, last night I did say I was going to wait. I was going to hold off because I knew in the morning, this morning, that we were going to receive some more breaking news. I just knew it. So that's why I didn't do the review last night. But anyway, I got one question. And, oh, let me turn on these phone lines. Um, I did say I was going to be taking calls tonight, so let me turn on the phone line. Uh, y'all see the phone number now? Oh, darn. Mm, y'all don't see the phone number. Uh, let me put it in the chat. Okay, hold on. Let me put the phone number in the chat. Okay, the phone number is uh, area code 605. Hold on. 
Hold on one second. Okay, the phone number is 605-475-4075. And access code. Access code 753-359. So let me uh, turn the phone lines on. Because I want to hear from you guys tonight. 605-475. Okay. Did I say 475? Yeah. Six zero five four seven five four zero seven five. I believe that's it. Let me let me call in and make sure. Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. Okay. you are the host, press star now. Other, please enter your PIN followed by the pound. Thank you. There is one host in this conference. Please enter your PIN followed by the pound. Your input is invalid. Uh -oh. You entered zero. Thank you. Okay, 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 okay. I have the phone line set up and I have the phone line turns on. Um, as I was saying, the first question I want to know is Is there anybody out there? Anybody out there? Anybody out there watching who still wants to give Jesse the benefit of the doubt? I'll wait. I'll nine, wait. Three, three, five, <laughs> but no, seriously. Is there anybody out there that still believes that there is a possibility, even if it's a faint possibility, that he might actually be telling the truth? That the Nigerian men who claim that he planned this whole hoax, that he planned this whole thing, um, are lying? Because I have seen some um, comments out there on the blogs and, you know, on some uh, YouTube videos that some people is like, I'm still going to give him the benefit of the doubt that maybe this light is too bright. I'm, uh, oh, God, that light is too bright. But um, there are some people out there who is claiming that they are still going to give him the benefit of the doubt, that there's a possibility that he might be still telling the truth and although the police have combed through um all kind of evidence all kind of surveillance tapes all kind of uh, witnesses and reports and basically you know they believe they had enough to charge him with a class four felony uh for falsifying you know police reports uh some people out there still think that he might be telling the truth. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I need to hear, if there's anybody out there that's, that still believes Jesse, I need to hear, what is your reason that you believe that he is still telling the truth? And th I didn't put this phone number in the chat. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, the phone number is 605-475-4075. Access code 753-359. Access code 753-359. 
Okay, I just put the phone number in the chat. So if anybody wants to call in, feel free to call in. The number is 605-475-4075. And the access code, um, I think you need the access code is 753-359. I can't remember if you guys need an access code or not. Because I'm using a different, uh, a different conference call, uh, system. But anywho, um, when I was watching the, uh, news this morning, when the police, uh, commander and, <sighs> man, I have never, ever heard a police superintendent, commander, chief, whatnot, sound so angry. Like, I done seen police chief superintendents, you know, make, make you know, when they got to have a press conference and they got to talk about a crime, whether it's a murder, uh, kidnapping, uh, you know, whatever. I have never heard one hold a pre press conference like that and be so angry. Like, he was Mr. Superintendent Eddie Johnson. He was pissed. He was upset. And I don't know if he was more upset because of the fact that they believe that Jussie, you know, concocted this whole, this whole big old lie um, and have them spend so many man hours, so much money, so much investigation, interviewing, um, uh, footwork, groundwork, um, I'm sure some of them spent sleepless nights trying to figure out who attacked this young man, this celebrity, this gay man, who's very, by the way, proud and open about who he is. You know, he, when I first saw him on Empire, when I first started watching the show, hey, lady, hey, Miss Hogg, how you doing? You need to call in. I'm going to need you to call in. I ain't heard from you in a minute. But, um, oh, yeah, the phone number is in the chat, 604-605-475-4075. Um, I don't know if Mr. Eddie Johnson, the police superintendent, um, was more upset because he lied and they wasted all valuable time they could have spent on other victims, other cases, other investigations, um, or the fact that he put this blame on uh, somebody, you know, basically to sh shine a very dark cloud on the city of Chicago. Knowing what we all already know about the city of Chicago. Um, I've been there many times. So, I didn't experience, you know, what it's like to be in Chicago in the winter, in the summer, in the spring. Um, one of my exes, uh, who I dated years ago, he has family there, a lot of family there. Um, on his mother's side. And we used to go there, you know, all the time all the time for vacations, we went there for funerals, you know, just whatever. So, I, I I know Chicago, not as well as a citizen of Chicago, but I know Chicago. And, oh, you said hubby uh, trying to sleep for 4 a.m. work? <laughs> no problem, I get it. I get it. Let that man sleep so he can get up and get them coins on time. <laughs> but, um, they already get a bad rap. You know, although it's a beautiful city, I mean, I ain't been there in a minute, so I'm sure there's probably been a lot of things done to the city, you know, since I went, you know, years ago, but, um, they already have a bad rap because of the high crime rate, um, gang violence, uh, you know, just, just a lot of things that's been going on with the, uh, community and the citizens in that town in that city and so for him to put that on them as well like somebody running around the town trying to hang people with a noose 
um, gay bashing, homophobic bashing, um, race, uh, races, uh, man, white supremacy. I mean, they already have enough bad things going on in that city. So I don't know. I, the way I was, this man, I thought he was about to break down and cry next. The way he was going off about Jussie. I mean, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I have a feeling that they are really going to go in on Jesse. I have a feeling, like, I had mentioned the other day that I hope whatever Jesse's going through, maybe they could get him some help. I mean, I know he's going to be charged for something. Um, you said Chicago did not need that. Yeah, Chicago did not need that at all. They they didn't need that at all. I mean, no city, no community where there are a lot of black citizens, a lot of um, LGBT community, you know, present, want something like that to happen in their community. And then to think that the person is on the loose, on the run, and they don't know who it is. You know, they don't know who it is. It could be anybody. That 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 superintendent felt like he was really, truly hurt. I mean, really, truly hurt. And then, like, the last thing I would have thought of was that he was angry about his salary. Oh, they're going to make an example out of him. I could tell. I could tell by the way... That super, oh, okay, now the now the guy, the commander who spoke after the superintendent, you know, when he got up there first and he was like, okay, you know, any questions? And, you know, then he started joking around like, oh, my bad, my bad. I was supposed to be telling y'all the timeline of all the events. <laughs> you know how we came to this conclusion. And so he was trying to joke and kind of, you know, lighten up the, you know, the situation because it was like, it was like, Man, you can hear you can hear a pin drop in there. It was so quiet, you know, when Superintendent Eddie Johnson was talking. And to find out he did all this because he wasn't satisfied with his pay. With his pay that I I I didn't see that coming. I mean, I think I with a lot of other people um, thought that that it possibly possibly might have something to do with him, you know, getting killed off the show. Because y'all know, y'all know I do reviews on uh Empire. <laughs> and I've been waiting on that show to come back because I'm still like, who's in the casket? I want to know who's in the casket. Every time I do a, a review every week, Okay, who y'all got? Who y'all got? Okay, let's make bets. Who y'all got in the casket? Uh, what y'all think? Put it down in the chat. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe Jesse was the one going to be killed off in the chat. But uh, I'm like, oh, anybody can call in. Thank you, Miss Hogg. Anybody can call in if you got anything to say on this subject of Jesse Smollett. Um, anybody can call in. Let me put the uh, let me put the phone number in there again. I'll put the phone number in there like every few minutes just so you guys can have it. But, uh, phone number 605-475-4075. Sorry, I'm looking to the side where I got my notes. 605-475-4075. That's the phone number. If you want to call in. Oh, yeah, y'all. Make sure y'all click that like button for me, please. Click that like button for me, please. Thank you very kindly. Um, But, oh, what was I saying? Um, Samantha working tonight. You know what? I'm not sure. Sam called me this morning. Uh, I think it was around like 10. And I was busy working, and uh, I called her back a few hours later. She didn't answer, so I'm like, okay, she'll call me back later or whatnot. But she never called, so I actually called her back like 20 minutes before I started this live. She didn't answer the phone, so I'm like, I don't know what she wants, Mrs. Hall. <laughs> but, ooh, tomorrow night, 
tomorrow night we will be doing a review on our sisters from another mr um movie review platform so tomorrow night she will be with me i don't know if i'll be at her house or if she'll be at my house but you know matter of fact i think she'll be at my house because she said she was going to come by right after work so the live that we do tomorrow um is going to be over the movie um what men want and if y'all ain't seen that movie and y'all love y'all so <laughs> i mean that movie i thought was great i thought it was great taraji she did great i enjoyed that movie but anyway yeah we'll do that review tomorrow night on uh what men want but um this i mean yeah the superintendent he was really pissed off and then you know i also found out you know some information i didn't know about chicago um when i was watching the uh press conference this morning like they are the city that hosts the largest pride parade you know in the world you know every year i didn't even know that i mean so i learned a little bit of you know information about you know uh chicago Thank you. I will tell her. I will tell her you said hello. <laughs> okay, you'll be ready for the review tomorrow. All right. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that was an awesome movie. But one thing that he was saying, you know, I think another thing that made him really, really angry was because the noose. Like, why did you have to go so far? Why did you have to take it that far? Like, that news, like the attendants, the superintendent said, that news represents everything ha about hatred. I mean, that is like probably one of the biggest symbols to represent hatred in this world is that news. That news that plagued slavery, black people, even the free ones, for hundreds of years. And to gain attention and publicity because you wasn't getting paid enough, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, these people go into these contracts. These people go into these contracts on these TV shows. Um... And they, they, they deal with their lawyers. They deal with their financial advisors. They deal with their managers. I mean, all these people in their circle. And you sign those contracts for said amount of dollars for a certain amount of years. And you locked into it. You locked into it. But because maybe other people in the show might be making more money or you think you should just be making more money period because of maybe how many ratings the show is getting you go out and do something this big so selfish like you it's, it's completely selfish over money it's completely selfish and i'm sure if you got enough money to pay these bros uh 10,000 or whatever you paid them, uh, you said good. <laughs> you said good. I ain't got $10,000 just to throw away to somebody that I know. No, I don't. I don't. We might be okay over here. Me and my sons, we might be okay. We ain't looking to find out where our next meal coming from, but we ain't got no $10,000 just to throw up in the air, you know, at any, you know, given person. But yeah, that was really selfish. Very selfish. And I mean, I think that's what angers most people. Not the fact that he just blatantly lied and wasted tax dollars and wasted people time. But he had the whole world in an uproar. Well, not the entire world, but y'all know what I mean. The, the He had a large portion of the world in an outrage i mean from presidents from presidents past presidents um well, i don't know about the one in there now but past presidents <laughs> presidential candidates 
um, celebrities, uh, his, his fellow, um, actors and actresses, you know, on the set, his fellow, you know, co-workers, um, the LGBT community, I think they probably were the most angriest, as they should be, um, and then us, the fans, and then people who probably had no idea who Jesse Smollett was. Some people who didn't know have no idea what the Empire show was. You know, maybe in different countries or something. You know, they might not. What's Empire? You know. <laughs> but and he and he used those Nigerians. Right. And they actually left the country. He like probably paid him, okay. Y'all y'all take this money. We gonna set this up. I'm going to get this publicity, and hopefully, <laughs> I don't know how, I really don't know how he thought he was going to get more money that way, by staging this whole, you know, attack, like, Lee was going to be like, oh, okay, you know, sorry, you got a noose around your neck, you got a scratch under your eye, okay, let's see, let's negotiate your pay, like, how did he figure out that what he was doing would get him more money on the show. Even if it really happened. Even if it really happened. Like, because you got attacked in the middle of the night on your way to get a foot-long sandwich from Subway, which, uh, I guess all was a lie. I don't know if he was going to get a foot-long or not. Was he going to get any food or not? I don't know. I don't know. But, um, I don't know. But uh, he sent those two men, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that he sent them, you know, here's some money, go out of the country, you know, go to your hometown and, you know, chill out over there, you know, chill out over there for a second, you know, y'all need to hide out and then come back. Like, he, you know what, Miss Hawk, he didn't. He didn't. He made a lot of mistakes. First of all, like they said in the press conference, first of all, modern technology can be a B.I. Okay? It's not always going to be on our side. Um, in this case, if this really happened, modern technology would have been awesome. They would have, you know, a, hey, you know, we did a lot of interviews. We did a lot of investigations. Uh, we did a lot of footwork, but they would praise the modern technology because not only was street cameras and cameras around businesses, but people who got cameras on their homes, cameras on top of their houses, cameras um, on their doorbells, you know, not just, uh, it, they said that what helped them a lot was community cameras, like neighborhoods. He 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 <laughs> he underestimated all that. <laughs> it wasn't worth his career, and he embarrassed himself and his family. And his family, you know, they was with him. You know, when he went to uh, when he went to uh court, when he went to um uh, bond, you know, for bond hearing. You know, his family, they were with him. And I can't imagine, I cannot imagine how they feel. I mean, I cannot imagine how they feel. Because if everybody, well, almost everybody, including the police, believe that Jesse is guilty, I'm sure somebody in his family probably believes he's guilty too. But, you know, his siblings, they showed up for him, you know, which which was, you know, likely to happen. You know, of course, he's he's acting like he's innocent, telling his family he's innocent, telling Lee Daniels and Nim, you know, his uh, fellow co-workers that he's innocent. And his, his siblings, of course, they're going to show up, you know, for support. But, um... Uh, I, if anybody, if anybody believes that he is still innocent, if anybody out there is giving him still the benefit of the doubt, you need to holler at me because I need to know the reason 
why are you still giving him the benefit of the doubt? Especially when we got all this information. And police do sometimes make mistakes. We all know that. Police do... <laughs> I won't even say sometimes, but, you know, sometimes, you know, more than more than they should, they make mistakes. But when I was sitting there watching this press conference and listening to everything, like, all the communication he had with the Nigerians while they was out of the country, um, he was, he was, he had a lot of communication with them. And just... <laughs> Oh, and then y'all know, I'm just, this is just so much. This is like so much. And some people is like, you said Miss Sophia on Instagram still support him. Hunty, I, she needs to call in. Get her on the phone. <laughs> Get Miss Sophia on the phone <laughs> because I, I want to know, like, <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Don't, oh, God, didn't nobody want him to be guilty? Especially if you're a fan of his, you know, especially if you're a fan of the show. We didn't want him to be guilty. But as the days went by, he was looking more and more and more like he stole the cookie out the cookie jar. He was looking more guiltier by the day. Talking about he without sin. Throw the, oh, yeah, I'm sure. He without sin, cast the first stone. <laughs> We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, we can quote all kind of scriptures. You tell Miss Miss Sophia to give me a call, Miss Hogg. Um, I would really like to speak to anybody. <laughs> and it's like, okay, yeah, we all have sinned. We all make mistakes. But this is so, like, far-fetched, so out there. All because you want a few more dollars, a few more zeros on the end of your check. So you go this far, you paying these Nigerians, and I still don't understand. Okay, I know they didn't play, well, one of them. I know he didn't play a big part on the show. I know he's not a, you know, uh, what do you call it? You said, oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm this this is this is so much like you know I seen somebody say the other day I meant to say he's not they're not a reoccurring actor on the show but so I'm not gonna say though that they probably broke and ain't got no money but ten thousand dollars to somebody who is broke you know that's a lot of money but it's not enough of money for me to fake no attack. And involve the police into it, law enforcement to it. You couldn't pay me enough money to do something like that. No, you can't. <laughs> nope. Mm -mm. And they did everything they could to avoid, you know, being found out. Like they left the country. When they got to a certain point, you know, on their way home, you know, in the cab or Uber or whatever they, you know, got home in. They got out, you know, before their home you know, away from their home, and walked, you know, the rest of the way. But thanks to all the cameras in the neighborhoods and all the, uh, you know, the cameras on the streets and buildings and everything, they were able to pinpoint exactly where they got in the cab, where they got out the cab, when they was with Jussie, when they left Jussie, when they got back in the cab, when they got back out the cab, when they walked home. I mean, you playing with the F to the B to the I. Okay? And I don't know who's worse, the IRS or the FBI, but I don't want to be involved with any of them. Any of those three big letters... I don't want to be involved with any of them, so you could not pay me enough. I don't know um, if, I don't know why those brothers did that. I really don't know. I really don't know. Um, fortunately for them, fortunately for them, they aren't going to receive any charges. Jesse is going to take all of this. He is going to take all of this, all of this heat. On his own, all because they complied, you know, they, 
basically, um, you said, yep, they thought they were slick. Law, enfor law enforcement was on it like white on rice. Like white on rice because this like, this like some weird, <laughs> man. The amount of crime that they have in Chicago and then this on top of it, they thinking it's some crazy white men run around in the middle of the night putting nooses on brothers, gay people, black folk. <laughs> Man, they weren't going to rest. They were not going to rest. This ain't no everyday this ain't no everyday, you know, crime. This, okay. I think maybe within the past, I don't know, five or ten years, I think I did hear about a story where somebody was hung or dragged or something. Them type of crimes, um, you can murder a whole family. You can murder a whole family. And probably rape every one of the kids. And then somebody else could turn around and do what Jesse said they did to him. And I guarantee you they'll spend more hours on that hate crime than they will on that murder and sexual assault. I guarantee you they will. They will. And that's why the um, police superintendent was so pissed, like so upset. You said he put too much into that. So that's right. He could have been like, oh, yeah, you know, I got beat up. You know, somebody hit me in my eye. I got away. They took my foot long. <laughs> they took my foot long. But I made it home. He had to go as far as the news. They were white people. They were yelling racial slurs, homophobic, homophobic slurs. And on top of that, on top of that, the letter. Now, I had said the other day that the letter, I said, now I don't believe if the letter was even real. And lo and behold, lo and behold, the letter wasn't even real. So you know what? He could be facing a federal charge on top of that. And the thing about it is, like they were saying on on GMA this morning, <laughs> Jesse, you had ample opportunity to steal. He, he still can say, I did it. I did it. You said, oh, wow, the manager was on the cell. Exactly. Exactly. He walking around for an hour or so with a noose still around his neck. First of all, after I got away, I'll be taking that thing off my neck. I might still have it in my hand and run home so I can give it away, give it to the, you know, the cops forever. The evidence, maybe they can get some fibers, some fingerprints, some sweat, some blood, some tears, you know, something off of there. You know, to help my case. Well, you know, help the case. <laughs> but, uh, no, he didn't do all that. He had to go to the extremes. He had to go to the extremes in his story. He still... Oh, no, Robin, man. And, you know, Robin is a part of the LBGTQ. You know what I'm saying? And I love me some Robin Roberts. I loved her since she was, you know, and back playing basketball and all that in college and everything. But, um, and when she was doing reporting, you know, sports and whatnot. But, um, Robin Roberts, I could tell when she was watching him, when she was asking him certain things and he was avoiding the questions, when she asked him about the phone, you know, I mean, just certain things that he was like trying to, you know, uh, Avoid the questions, beating around the bush. Robin been doing this for a very, very, very long time. And because of the fact that she's black, um, she's a minority, she's a female, she's in the LBG, LB, ugh, I always mess up when I try to say that, but you know what I mean, LBGTQ community. 
Um, I swear, it was like Robin was sitting there, and she was like, looking right through him. Like, like, <laughs> she probably wanted, <laughs> you know, she, she couldn't do what she probably wanted to do, which was like, call him a big old whole lie, you know, on national television. <laughs> But I'm sure that's what was going through her head. Like, this, this, he lying. He lying. Why are you lying? You ain't got a lie to kick it. Why are you lying? You right. She was like, you know, I see you. I see right through you. <laughs> Miss Hall. <laughs> girl, girl. I mean, I saw right through it in the interview. But then I was like, Okay, I know he's lying about this, but I was still trying to get him the benefit of the doubt that the letter was actually real. See, my whole, in my, in my little world, the way my wheels were spinning, and, you know, I was thinking, okay, maybe the letter was real, somebody really did threaten him, um, it said, you know, Jesse, you will die. Jesse, you must die. It said something like that. Um, and maybe, maybe nobody like believed or took him serious enough. And that's why he did it. See, I was still trying to give him the benefit of the doubt that the letter is real and he's just, you know, trying to bring attention, you know, to his safety, like people should be more concerned or maybe the cops wasn't on it or maybe the FBI wasn't on it or maybe his, you know, co-workers, you know, um, Fox or whatever, you know, Empire, maybe they weren't as concerned about it as they should have been. So I was giving him the benefit of the doubt that the letter was actually real. And then come to fall out, it's a whole big ass lie. It's uh, everything was a lie. Like everything, the letter. And, and again, somebody please help me. How would this have, if this really was true though, if it really was true, how would this have benefited his pockets? As far as with Lee Daniels, the Empire cast, you know, his paycheck, his direct deposit. How would this have benefited his pocket? That that's 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 what I'm just most confused about right now. Like I get him, I get what he was doing. Although it was wrong, I get what he was doing. He was trying to gain some publicity and everything, but. They sometimes say, they sometimes say, all publicity is good publicity. Even if it's good, even if it's bad. All publicity is good publicity. I'm going to have to call them on it now. I'm going to have to call them on that now. Because, um, I don't think he's going to be signing any contracts for a minute. The next thing Jesse might be signing is all his um, property over at the jail. Um, his clothes, his shoes, his jewelry, whatever, his wallet. Right, and I know he wanted Empire to feel sorry for him, but I just don't see how it would have benefited him that way. Like, they would have just been like, oh, yeah, we feel really sorry for you. Let's increase his pay by 50000 a 100000 I don't see that equivalent of that ever happening if that story, this whole big made-up story, was really true. Publicity, yeah. A few interviews, yeah. But other than that, I, I I don't I don't equate that anywhere in my head to adding more zeros onto his bank account. I just don't. It don't make sense. That's why I said somebody help me out. 
somebody who still, you know, believes that he's not lying. Like, he's still, you know, after the court hearing, the bond hearing, you know, he went right back to the Empire set, still pleading his innocence, pleading that he's not guilty. He went straight to the set after paying 10K, you know, after paying the bond, turning over his passport, he went right back to, you know, right to the Empire set and still telling them basically, you know, I didn't do it. Um, they said TMZ reported that allegedly, allegedly TMZ reported, you know, it was obvious that he had been crying. So producers told him to come back later. Yeah, he went directly from the bond hearing after he paid the 10K. He went directly to the set of Empire, begging them to believe him. It was said that he allegedly told everyone on the set, I wanted to say, I'm sorry, and you know me, I would never do this to any of you. You are my family. I swear to God, sweet little baby Jesus, wrapped in swaddling clothing, I did not do this. Well, he said, swear to God, I added the sweet little newborn baby Jesus, you know, in the manger part, but I added that. But you know what I mean. He basically begging them to believe him. Um, And then it said, allegedly, from TMZ, and you, okay, you already know, they they probably been following him around for the last two weeks, so I, I can believe it. But anyway, allegedly, um, after they told him to come back later, yeah, he begging for his lost job. <laughs> you said, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> ah, but um, <laughs> his, his legal team, called him a young man of impeccable character and integrity and said, today we witness an organized law enforcement spectacle that has no place in the American legal system. Just like a noose. Just like a noose. No place in the American legal system system. <sighs> hot mess. Hot mess. Dot Ooh, hot mess. <sighs> hot mess. But you know what? The outline, the, the timeline that they gave us, <laughs> you, you, who you telling? No. No dang integrity at all. Let's go back to what you said earlier, Mrs. Hawk. Selfish. Selfish, selfish, selfish. He was thinking all about Jesse. All about Jesse and his publicity and his paychecks. And his paychecks. Now, I hadn't even heard that he had a album coming out. Or a CD, a single, or, you know, something coming out. And I hadn't even said... I would probably buy it because I really think he's very talented and I really think on the show he'd be holding back, you know, just because it's a TV show. He does great on the TV show. Very talented. I love his voice and I love when him and Hakeem, you know, when Hakeem does his rap and he does his singing, play the, you know, instruments and keyboard, you know, all that. I would buy his CD. That's money he could have had. The, the, his music? I mean, he could have made money off of that. He could have made, like, in the off-season of Empire, he could have had concerts, you know. <sighs> Y'all, this is just crazy. Waste of talent. Yep, waste of talent. Waste of talent. He could be facing federal charges. Federal charges. Because of that letter. Because that's basically, you know, mail tampering, illegal, um, 
you know, tampering a mail, sending threats through the mail, even if they're fake. <laughs> even if they're fake. You know, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, y'all, they said he has to go back to court on March 14th to face a felony charge, you know, of filing a false police report. All because he thought he deserved cookie money. <laughs> <laughs> you right. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> the whole thing is, okay, now, I told y'all that we doing the Sisters from Another Mr. Uh, movie review tomorrow night. Uh, me and Sam, who I do that with, like, uh, several times a month. Um, She was in that cookie. Cookie was in that Tarashi. That girl is a bad mama jamma. He will never make as much money as Taraji P. Hinton. Never. This girl has been acting for how many years? Like 25 years. I don't want to make her too old. I don't want to make her too old. But, um, oh, you said what time? Uh, Sam said when she get off of work, she coming straight over my house. Uh, I think, so I want to say like 6 p.m. Between 6 and 7 p.m., you know what? But I'm going to hit you up on Facebook when I find out the exact time. I'll hit you up on Facebook. But, and then, of course, I'm going to set the, uh, you know, the timer, you know, the notification. I'm going to do all that and put the, uh, notification on. So, y'all who do not have that bell clicked, make sure you please... Um, hit that notification bell. That way you get all my notifications. Whenever I go live, whenever I schedule a live, you'll get all my notification. But I love Taraji. And when I say, now you know the last review we did, Samantha was on this side. I was on this side. She was like, uh, hated it. I was like, uh, liked it. She was like, hated it in Z formation. <laughs> you know, I got that from me and on film. For those of y'all who, uh, Used to watch the old the old TV show, um, Man in Color. I mean, Living Color, Men on Film. Hated it, <laughs> but yeah, she did not like that last movie that we did. Uh, but I did it. I, I liked it. But anyway, um, Taraji, he can't get mad because he ain't making as much money as Cookie and Lucius. Like, Cookie and Lucius has been in so many movies and TV shows and, I mean, just too many to name. The list is the rap sheet of all the things that they've done, you know, as far as film and TV is ridiculous. So, I don't know whose pay he was trying to, you know, whose pockets he was trying to reach in, um, whose piggy bank he was trying to pull from, but... Again, I don't I don't see how he thought that what he was doing with this big old hoax would equate to him getting more moolah, more dough, more benchies. I just don't I don't see it. I don't see it. Yep, I'm gonna hit you up. I'm gonna hit you up on FB Messenger. I sure will. I got you. But y'all again. 36-year-old Jesse Smollett has been charged with Class 4 felony um, filing a false police report. He had a $100,000 bond. He paid $10,000. He had to surrender his passport. Um, I guess just so he don't take off to Nigeria where them brothers was hiding. Um, you said, have the cast members spoke out yet? Um, I haven't seen anything from the cast members. I need to get on that. Because I follow Taraji and all of them on Instagram. So, I I do need to get on that. But, but I haven't seen anything just, you know, while cruising the blogs. Or, you know, I haven't seen anything, um, any specific uh, comments from the cast. But what I did hear was that they were definitely on his side. 
they were definitely on his side. And then, I guess, when, when the direction of the investigation turned, I'm pretty sure that they, um, they, everything turned for them at the same time. You said maybe somebody got in his head making him think he was a bigger star on Empire. Nope. And although he does play a big character on Empire, although he does, and especially the last, um, this last, this past season or this, you know, current season, um, when he started dating that guy that he had met overseas, uh, and how they had implemented him into the storyline and, um, he's already gay, and you know how it started from, if you watch the show from the very beginning, how Lucius hated the fact that he was gay, you know, he was embarrassed of his son, he didn't want him to have anything to do majorly in the company, make big decisions, um, you know, things like that, and then how over the seasons, Lucius that came to deal with him being out and being open and, you know, having... Like this last past season, it was Cookie who was always, you know, complaining or worried all the time because of who he was, you know, involved with. And it was Lucius. Now, Cookie, he's grown. We didn't raise him right. Uh, we have to trust that he know what he's doing, you know, because the character was HIV positive, you know. He didn't have full-blown AIDS, but he was HIV positive. So, you know, this past season, as far as the LBGTQ um, community, you know, it made a big effect on that community. And, you know, to others as well. I was like, wow. You know, first of all, they start talking about that prep, which... The first time I heard about prep was actually on Brother Jay, um, on his, uh, and I won't go back into that too much into him because right now, <laughs> everybody and their mama is talking about Brother Jay right now, so I'm not even, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, talking about prep here. I'm just talking about prep. Um, uh, we can talk about Brother Jay another day. <laughs> and, oh yeah, I did do a video on him a few days ago. So, Brother Jay Wilson, check it out. Anywho, um... <laughs> Uh, that's the first time I heard about prep was through Brother Jay Wilson, and I didn't know much about it. Um, I knew that it was something that you take, uh, <laughs> Miss Hall. <laughs> uh, I knew it was something that you take, um, to help prevent you from catching HIV or AIDS, especially, um, if you were uh, out there just, you know, having been involved with more than one person and stuff like that, I did not know that people who date people who have AIDS or HIV, I didn't know that the PrEP still helps prevent it if you deliberately are sleeping or, you know, having sexual relationships with somebody with HIV. So, you know, there, there's a few things, you know, watching these shows, you learn a lot. You know, you learn a lot. But, um, uh, you said he, ooh, he did? He blocked you from your chat, from the chat? Oh, my. Oh, wow. I'm surprised he blocked you and probably a thousand more people <laughs> from his chat. Because people would be going in on brother. Oh, Lord. Ooh. Anyway, anyway, anyway. But, so anyway, this last season, you know, um, back to Jesse and his pocketbook or whatever. Um, This last season, I think, you know, really, really had a good tone to it. Because after Lucius, y'all remember when Lucius had got hurt? Um, he had got shot, he lost his legs, and he lost his memory, and all this, and the ratings went down. Everybody was like, we sick of Lucius, not having his memory, he need to get his memory back, da 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 the show is boring, woo -da woo 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 So, you know, I thought the show was, being, was doing pretty good this last past season. So, 
I'm thinking, you know, maybe this man probably makes some decent cash. He probably makes some decent money on this show. They've been around for a while. You know, it's, a, it's still a top show on the networks. But even if he wasn't making as much money as he was or as he wanted, it's, the, it's, it's a senseless, it's a senseless crime. It's a senseless crime. And, and I don't know whether to feel sorry for him or to be pissed off at him. I don't know. You said, I've never been blocked. Don't know what I did. Could have been one of his mods. You know what? I think somebody blocked me before either I blocked them. Ooh, you know, yep, I had blocked them. Because one time I was in somebody's chat... <laughs> And I got a message from YouTube when I was, I had commented something in the chat and it was somebody that I follow that I really like, that I'm subscribed to. And I try to support, you know, people I'm, I'm subscribed to, you know, just like I like people to support me and watch my videos every now and again. But, um, I was commenting in the chat and I got this notification from YouTube. It popped up like right there and it said... Basically, it was it was an alert. Like, you are commenting in a chat where there is a uh, moderator who you blocked. But, since you commenting in this chat, and that person you blocked is a moderator in this chat, they can see what I'm saying. What I'm saying. But I can't see them. I was like, what the hell? kind of YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? They can see me, but I can't see them. And I block them. That's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah. that's. And you know, they just came out with the new uh, YouTube guidelines. So next time they do a survey, it's something like Lockhead Boss Lady. She has said, on her live a few days back when she was talking about the guidelines. She was like, a lot of the time we'll see those um, requests from YouTube to do a survey to let them know what we think about what, you know, our experience on YouTube or, you know, whatever. And I always skip. I never do the surveys. I ignore them. But I'm going to start checking out them surveys from now on because I think that's wrong. Like, if you block somebody... Regardless, if you want to chat where they moderate or not, neither one of y'all should be able to see each other's comments. But then again, I get it because they are a moderator. But I wonder if they send, I wonder if they send a message to the person whose uh, platform it is. I wonder if it tells them there is somebody commenting in your chat who has blocked one of your moderators. Good question, huh? But anywho, anywho, y'all. Anywho. Um, March 14th. We gonna see what's gonna happen. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that before then, maybe possibly tonight, tomorrow, this weekend, Jesse will confess. And quit dragging this out like, okay, you gonna be charged. But, like, you know, the, uh, what's that lady's name on, um, The View? The black lawyer. The, um, she's, she's, uh, part Mexican and, no, part Puerto Rican and part black. Beautiful, s slim lady, long, pretty hair. Um, she's on The View. I can't, I can't remember her name right now. But, uh, but, um, it's my thing, charge. But she's on The View, and I wish I could remember her name right now. But she basically said, you know, she's been a lawyer, you know, for a long time. And she basically said, if, if he confesses, because he still has time to confess before, you know, uh, sentencing. And if he confesses, he can still get, uh... Oh, did I unplug the light? I'm sorry. I'm trying to plug up my, uh, I'm trying to plug up my, uh, cord to my laptop because it said low battery. But if he confesses, they, he said the prosecutors 
even in very serious crimes, they still might, you know, feel a little bit of passion, have a little bit of passion for you, you know, before they sentence him. So they are, we already know that they're going to try to throw the book at him. They're going to try to make an example out of him. He still has time, but is it because of his pride? Is it because, um, what you say, you saw a lockhead stated YouTube rules change in February 25th, but didn't get a chance to watch it. Um, don't know her name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, she, she's really, she's a really smart and intelligent person. The lady on The View, um, I can't remember her name right now. But as far as, uh, as far as, um, and I don't know why my chat isn't showing up. I just realized that. That my chat isn't showing up. Uh, window. I just realized my chat isn't showing up on my screen. <laughs> uh, okay, but anywho, anywho, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. But uh, what was I saying? Um, Lockhead, yes. She had did a video a few days ago on that. And then I had did a video... Um, was it yesterday? No, it was Tuesday. I did a video. So, um, if you want, you can check hers out. You can check mine out. I think, what did I name mine? Uh, new YouTube guidelines. I think that's what I named mine. New YouTube guidelines. But yeah, and it's, it starts on the 25th. It starts on the 25th. Um, just to give y'all, I'm not going to go into all the details because I'm about, um, to wrap this live up. But just to give y'all a little bit of information on the new YouTube guidelines. Um, the first time you do something wrong, uh, you get a warning. Now, this is not the copyright stuff. This is not the copyright stuff. The copyright, um, rules are still kind of the same. The copyright rules are still kind of the same. But let's say, uh, you were cursing or let's say you were threatening, or let's say you were, you know, doing something on YouTube you shouldn't be doing. Um, the first time you get a warning, you get a warning. This, and um, the second time, which would be your first strike, your YouTube account will be suspended. Well, it would be frozen. It'll be frozen for one week. So you can't upload you can't go live, you can't upload, you can't go live for one week. When you get your second strike, if you mess up again and you get a second strike, your YouTube channel will be frozen for two weeks. Two weeks. You can't go live, you can't upload for two weeks. Uh, once you get that third strike, <laughs> once you get that third strike, I think it's three weeks. You can't go live. You can't upload for three weeks. Um, and then after that, it's like, it's, it's basically a wrap. you like, you, you're right. Yeah, cussing, I mean, they when they say cussing, um, they want you to make sure, uh, like, okay, we know, Miss Hogg, we know some people who we subscribe to. And they be cussing like a sailor. I mean, every other word out their mouth is M F B I F U. Um, just all profanity. Yeah, just just a lot of cussing. Um, you can just put those on private. I mean, not not private, but put those on age restrictions. Now, of course, you won't be monetized because any video, even now, if it's on age restriction, you're not getting monetized. So, you know, so I guess if you really want to cuss somebody out, you know, till you blue in the face and you want to do it on YouTube, I guess, you know, it, it doesn't bother you that you're not getting, you know, if you're monetized, you ain't get nothing off that video. So y'all make sure y'all check it out. Um, go into your creator studio. Uh, you can't get there by the app. You have to use the browser or your internet. Um, so you have to, you know, the, you have to go to the actual website to look at your creator studio and then in there you'll find the guidelines. 
So, and the new ones, again, they start on the 25th. Y'all check them out. Yeah, age restrictions. Yeah, age restrictions. Um, uh, because most of the time when you are monetized and you have like, uh, you have like commercials, you know, running on your channel, a lot of those, uh, advertisers, they ain't trying to have any commercials on your page if you're talking about or have, trying to pay you to advertise. You talking about all kind of explicit stuff like just, you know, just, you know, I can't think of no example right now. <laughs> but, you know, talking about sex or, you know, um, just, you know, a lot of vulgar, a lot of explicit stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, because for one thing, when it's on restriction, um, that means a lot of people might not even want to watch it. Because there are some people out there who might be bougie-brained, you know, bougie in the mind, you know, super Christian, you know, things like that. No no offense to the Christianity, popul po you know, community. <laughs> Shoot, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a Pentecostal and I'm a Baptist. I'm all the above. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> I curse every now and again. But, uh, you know... We just got to, let me hang up this phone because I still got this uh, conference thing on. But anyway, you know, it is what it is. Oh, yeah. And see, I was thinking about that too, but it's restricted anyway. You know, his, his, uh, his show is restricted anyway, I believe. I believe. But, you know, uh, shows like that, yeah. Like the pink door. Oh, you mean the pink door? Yeah, the pink door. I'm sure shows like that have to be restricted anyway because he be getting all into it. Telling you how to do it and how to use it and how to move it. But, okay. <laughs> anyway, y'all, it's late. I need some sleep. I had a long day, a long day and a long night at this nursing home. <sighs> Y'all, if if it wasn't for HIPAA, I swear, if it wasn't for HIPAA, I'd be giving y'all so many stories. I mean, I can give y'all stories to last a lifetime. Nursing home stories. <laughs> that would drive you nuts. But um, if it wasn't for HIPAA, if it wasn't for HIPAA, there will probably be some really great uh, reality shows on nursing homes out there. And I would like to star in it. You know, I would like to be one of the reoccurring stars, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, boy, working at a nursing home, boy. They say you got to have tough skin to be on YouTube. You got to have tough skin to work in a nursing home. I'm telling y'all truth. What you say, Miss Hogg? Uh... Did you see that VS Woman Empowerment? And you know, no, I didn't. I heard about it. I heard that she made a 10-hour live, and I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. I did not believe it. So, earlier today, I went to her channel, because I'm not subscribed, but every now and then when I hear a story or hear something happen... And, you know, I'll be like, oh, let me check this out, see what's going on over there. But when I heard she had a 10-hour live, I went over there and I looked. I was like, oh, my day. They had a 10-hour live. Like, I, they had a 10-hour live. I can't. I, now, okay, y'all who been following me, y'all know I have the gift of gab. I can sit here and talk. I can give you the breakdown of any show that I watch. <laughs> like, you ain't even got to watch the shows that I review because I can break it down like that, where you think you done saw the show. <laughs> you be, I got people who watch my reviews channel and they give me props because they be like, I don't even watch TV like that. I don't have time to watch TV. I don't have time. I just come to you for the review and I feel like I watch the show. See? I have the gift of gab, you know, but 10 hours, 10 hours, I'm going to need a nap like a kindergartner. <laughs> I'm going to need a nap. I'm going to 
gonna need my juice and my cookies and my sandwich cut in half. I'm gonna need, <laughs> uh uh, wear my blankie. Nope, nope. I, I'm gonna need a nap after, after you know, like, hey, that's like, okay, and I'm gonna need time and a half, time and a half. All of y'all who super chatting and all of y'all who, um, <laughs> Putting money to the PayPal's and the cash apps and all that. I'ma need some overtime pay like it's a holiday. Like, okay, what was the last holiday, Lincoln? Link, yep. I'ma need overtime pay. I'ma need holiday pay. I'ma need back pay. <laughs> Ten hour live. Okay. Anyway. No. <laughs> I can't do it. And I love my platform. I love my YouTube channel. I love my subscribers. But I ain't kicking it with y'all for no 10 god doggone hours. Nope. I will not. I will not. Y'all be y'all be up there talking to be to yourself. And I'll be up here like this. Oh, uh, what you say, Miss Hall? What was that? Jesse did what? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> 10 hours, that's a very long time. That's a very long time. And, and, and if I have that much time to be on a live, that means I'm obviously probably off of work. This is my day to do stuff around the house, relax, you know, go get some toes done, get some nails, go get something, go buy me a new wig, something. <laughs> I don't know, 10 hours on a live? No, I can't do it. But more power to her. More power to her. She got a little bit more gusto than I do. <laughs> you said I don't have that type of kind of time. We only got... Thank you. <laughs> we got 24 hours in a day. <laughs> and did you see me the other day when I was working on those Sweet 16 cupcakes for my customer? <laughs> I'm like... I was up to like 2 a.m. Working on those cupcakes because I had to work like uh one two three nine eight nine ten. I had like a twelve thirteen hour shift and had to you know work on those cupcakes after that. And it was for my friends, you know, sixteen years old. She's a brilliant, amazing, charming, talented, athletic. I mean, everything you can want in a daughter. That's what she is. So. I did not mind staying up to 2 o'clock in the morning so I can make them cupcakes for her. And they were cute, by the way. Check them out on my Tanya's Delights Slice by Slice Facebook page. You can follow me on that page. I am a part-time professional custom cake decorator. Did you hear that? Personal custom cake decorator. So, you know, anywho, I just, you know, do stuff for, like, my family and friends, you know. You know, but, um, anyway, yeah, it was, matter of fact, I did a video, um, uh, while I was doing the cupcakes, because, you know, I do that every now and then, I'll decorate some cakes or decorate some party trees or something while I'm doing a review, so, yeah, I did the video, um, the other day, uh, what day was that? It was like two days, yeah, it was two days ago. When I was up to like, I, it was like 1 a.m. in the morning, and I'm on a review, and I'm thinking, ain't nobody gonna show up. It's late at night, everybody sleep. So I'm up here making my cupcakes and frosting them and everything. And then people start coming into the live. I'm like, hey, what y'all doing up? It's like almost 2 a.m. in the morning. But yeah. But um, yeah, so y'all check me out. You know, and I do have a. Uh, I have a um, YouTube channel. Oh, I need a drink. Ooh, <clears throat> mouth got dry. But I need. I have a YouTube channel, and um, my YouTube, my other YouTube channel is called uh, Tanya's Delights. Slice by slice. So you can check me out over there. Um, one thing about my uh, cake decorating YouTube channel, I call it not your average cake tutorial channel because I don't sit there like most um, dessert YouTube videos, cake 
videos. I don't just sit there and decorate a cake in silence and then bam, there you go. <laughs> End of video after like a minute or so. I actually sit there and I chit chat about whatever's going on, you know, trending news, you know, just whatever we want to talk about while I'm decorating desserts. Yep, Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice. Yep, it's on YouTube and it's on Facebook and it's on Twitter and it's on Instagram. So, yeah. But, anywho, yeah. So, I did that and um, I did, uh, matter of fact, hold on one sec. One sec, honey. I'm going to go to my, uh, Here we go. Okay. I'm going to show y'all the little cute little cupcakes. Okay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> These is just some of my past orders over the last, um, like, last two weeks yeah these are um some of the orders over the last two weeks so here's some little cupcakes <coughs> excuse me here's some little cupcakes i did um uh, for a little girl and she likes penguins she told me and i've been doing cupcakes for this little girl for like her past few birthdays it's a friend of mine um, she likes penguins, so I basically took, like, some pictures from her mom, um, used my photo editor, edited out the background, put her on a cupcake topper, an edible cupcake topper, by the way, and put some pictures of some little penguins on them and everything. But, yeah, they really, really cute. This is a cute little girl. Um, so she loved them. She was like, ooh, the cake lady got it looking like I'm holding the penguin. <laughs> But, yeah, and that's a little close-up shot of her. But, yeah, cute little girl. Um, this actually is a cake I did for my 18-year-old. He turned 18 a few weeks ago. This is his cake. That's his. And this is a birthday cake I did for somebody's um boyfriend or husband, I think. Hus yeah, husband. Um, his nickname is Smoke. And so it says, happy birthday, Smoke. But that's like my top cake, strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake. Um, this is a Lakers cake I did for a little boy. Uh, my friend's son. Like I said, I just do stuff for like family and friends. Um, and he liked the Lakers. So this was for his birthday party last weekend. Um, oh, and here's the Sweet 16 cupcakes that I did. Uh... You can see, like, matter of fact, hold on. That's a closer up pick. That's another close pick. And here's actually, like, the pics, the uh, photos up top. Those were the pictures that her mom sent me that she had took for her birthday with her new outfit and her hair laid, you know, fresh, you know, so that's her little outfit for her 16th birthday. And so I incorporated those pictures into the cupcakes. And as you can see, I cropped everything out in the back. You know, I'm really, really good at that. And um, making it seem like, you know, there's nothing behind her. And then I put it on a cupcake and some type of design on an edible cupcake topper, which is I did there. So, you know, I'm pretty good with that little photo editing, Photoshop stuff. And, oh, I have an edible printer, by the way, to, uh, 
make edible uh pictures you can eat that stuff like eat that stuff <laughs> but um and here's a cake that i made uh today it's actually every month i have a free cake giveaway for the people who stay around my local community around my local area um and when they subscribe to my youtube channels they get to enter every month on the first of the month for a free cake and they win a free cake and they get like four choices either like that strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake that i showed you before or um a banana pudding cake which is this one that's one angle that's another angle and that's another angle homemade my desserts are homemade and that's a cake i made a long time ago for a little girl who liked uh who liked uh ladybugs but anyway um and then yeah there's my promotion right there free cakes that banana pudding is fire when i tell you it's fire and i make the cupcakes too every cake flavor i make i make also in cupcakes so yeah but in here um so, yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel, like, oh, yeah, here's a cake I made about a week ago. It's a Patron cake for somebody's boyfriend named Nook. Nook, if you buck, Nook, Nook, if you buck, a. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is a cake she wanted, a Patron cake. It got the platinum drizzle, the chocolate platinum drizzle coming down the side of the cake. Chocolate covered strawberries. Um, and she also wanted a, a set of chocolate covered strawberries also. And if you can see, like, if you look real close, it has like edible Patron labels on the cupcakes. And it also has the little infusers, um, inside the strawberries. Did I say on the cupcakes? I meant on the strawberries. And it has a, uh, yeah, Nuck, if you buck, hey, you know that song, Miss Hog. <laughs> but yeah, it has the, um, it has some Patron, uh, Patron Silver in these little infusers in the, uh, strawberries. So yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's my little hobby. That's what I like to do. That's what I like to do, you know, in my spare time. So yeah, you can check out all my desserts. On my uh, Tanya's Delight Slice by Slice um, Facebook page, I do everything from cakes, <clears throat> cupcakes, um, tiered cakes, uh, whatever. Here's a cake I did for somebody probably about a month ago. Stroll, she was strolling into her 50s. <laughs> but yep so yeah i do everything parties all that so uh yeah you can check me out on my um uh, facebook i mean yeah my facebook tanya's delight slice by slice page and my tanya's delight slice by slice youtube channel channel but anyway yes that's you know what i like to do you know that's what i like to do bake decorate so anyway but yeah, strawberry, mm -hmm. somebody said that one time, um, they was looking at my pictures, they was like, man, there's some big old strawberries. I said, y'all don't know, when somebody requests a cake from me or with strawberries or some chocolate covered strawberries or anything like that, I will go store to store to find the best, most perfect strawberries and I don't get them until, like, the evening before, you know, <laughs> I make the uh, dessert because they have to be, like, fresh to death and perfect, like, beautiful strawberries. So I don't play when it comes to my strawberries now. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Hogg. Thank you. I, um, I got into cake decorating and desserts and all that stuff. Um, it was actually after my mom passed some years ago. Because she used to be the one who did, like, all the desserts for, like, um, me. And, and, and it's funny because she would make me a cake every year. And i will probably eat, like, a sliver of it. Because I'm not really a big cake person. Um, my kids would 
they would tear that cake up. My nieces, nephews, you know, cousins and everything, they would tear that cake up. She makes all the cakes for, made all the cakes for her grandkids. I mean, her niece and uh, nephews, her, you know, um, our kids, me and my brothers, you know, she made, you know, the cakes for everybody. Um, holidays, and when she passed, it was like, okay, um, the first uh, birthday that came around for one of my sons, I was like, we had planned a big old party, a big old party, put out a whole bunch of money, DJs and everything, and at the last minute, I'm like, oh my God, the cake. Oh my God, we have no cake. We have no cake. I mean, it like totally slipped my mind after my mom passed and the next birthday came around. And because it was way later when the next birthday came around, like eight months later. And I had to order a cake from the store and it like barely got touched. It like the kids didn't like it. I was like, that's the last cake I'm going to buy from a store. Um, and I was like, I'm just going to take up where she left off. And so that's how I got into cake decorating. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, <laughs> that's the story of my life. But uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. You said so, Mama passed. Yes, that and that and her uh, food. Like I'll call my dad. Like literally, you know how you have like a big mama in the family. Um, she wasn't Big Mama. Big Mama was my grandma, of course. But my grandma passed, you know, after my mom. And it was, like, their houses and maybe, like, one other person, you know, every holiday, like, that's, you went over there, you ate good, you know, mingled with family and friends and all that kind of stuff. You know, she was, like, the person. And everybody in the family had to have her dressing her turkey and dressing her chicken and dressing i mean it was i'm telling you she sold that stuff like seriously people would pay her to make dressing for their holidays that's how good it was my mom could cook her butt off and so after she passed i had never made dressing before she passed and after she passed it took me maybe like I want to say three or four times with the help of my dad and what I can remember that she did to perfect it. I'm telling you, my family and my cousins, every time I come to a dinner, Tanya made the dressing. You're the only one that can make the dressing like your mama made the dressing. So, yeah. I, I She passed down a few things to me, and I told my sons, when, you know, I get older or whatever, you know, well, I already got, like, I got a lot of recipes from my mom wrote down. I got a lot of cake recipes wrote down. I have scrapbooks of recipes. And I told my sons, when is my time to go? Even if y'all don't want to get in that kitchen, y'all going to get married eventually one day. Y'all can, A, hey, tell your wife, your boo, <laughs> hey, go get mama's dressing recipe out the cabinet. <laughs> But yeah, so that's what's up. You said I still can't. I'm, honey, it took me a minute. Now, mind you, the first few times I tried it, it was still good. You know, it was good. It was edible. It, you know, people enjoyed it. But it wasn't like mama. So I just kept doing it and doing it. And now I swear to God, I can make dressing like my mom. You know, she never measured anything. No matter what she could, she never measured anything. And I can make dress and blindfold without measuring anything. And it's fire. <laughs> it's like fire. My dressing, my greens, my uh, green bean casserole. I make all kind of stuff. Macaroni and cheese, baked mac. I make all kind of stuff. So, yeah, I love to cook. But, yeah, that's the story of my life. <laughs> But, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed my video. Thank you. Yes, tomorrow, make sure you check out me and Sam uh, with another Sisters from another Mr. Uh, movie review. We will be reviewing um, that movie with Taraji P. Hinton, What Men Want. And if you have not watched it and you got time to watch it during the day tomorrow, go ahead and, you know, go out and, you know, Hang out at the movies with your man, your woman, you know, whatever, your girl, your guy, your friends, your sis, brother, whatever. It's a really good movie for guys and women. 
really good movie. So yeah, check that out. So I'm 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 excited to review that movie with you guys tomorrow. Very excited. And toodles to you too. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Um, as far as Jesse Smollett, all I can do. If you're a true fan of his and you know you still support him regardless of this big old mess that he created, just pray that they may show, may show a sliver of, you know, mercy on him March 14th, March 14th. So unless so, and unless something really big happened before then, like maybe he confessed or... Uh, I don't know. Or maybe they find out that he really didn't lie. I probably won't make another uh, review about Jesse until, you know, the court date. So, just to get y'all a heads up. Just to get y'all a heads up. But anyway, it's been real, you guys. I enjoy talking to you guys tonight. I'm going to get off of here and go shower and get in my jammy jams. And, you know, grab me something, you know, for my little red cup. <laughs> grab me some for my real, real yes please keep them in your prayers please i will i will too i will too but anyway in the meantime and in between time prime time squad as usual stay safe be blessed and i'm out deuces good night